So in this video, I want to introduce the keyword in context or quick concordance tool of ANCONC. So let's look at that tool now. Okay, so uh, here you can see ANCONC uh, as a single file executable. If we double click this, it will start and look like this. And uh, the first thing to do is load in a corpus. And I explain how to do that in the getting started uh, video. So here I'll go to file and go to open corpus manager. And here I'm going to select, select one of the pre-built corpora, which is the Amio 6 learned subcorpus of academic English. So I've double clicked on that, click OK, and now we're ready to start. So in this video, I want to explain how to use the first tool here, which is the keyword in context tool or the quick concordance tool of ANCONG. So uh, this tool allows you to uh, search for words and phrases and see how they're used within the corpus as a whole. So to use this tool, uh, we have a set of controllers here. Um, so you can see here we can set the search term as words. And if we deselect this, we can search for word fragments or parts of words. We can also activate the case option. So we can search for uppercase words or lowercase words. We also have a regex option if you want to search using the regex or regular expression language, we can use that too. At the moment, the results are going to, as the result set is all hits, so everything will be shown. And we have a context size of five words to the left and five words to the right. And you'll see what that means in a moment. So let's type a word and see how it is displayed here in the quick tool. Now, for this demonstration, I'm interested in looking at the writing style uh, in academic language. And one of the interesting words uh, is we. Uh, we is, an, um, is used in various ways. So let's see how that looks now. Okay, so we can see here uh, that the quick display shows on the left the file where the word appears. And then we have some context be before the word. We have the word itself, and then we have some word, the, some context after the word. And this is how the quick cut tool looks. So the context size here um, means how many words to the left and how many words to the right are going to be shown in the display. And you'll notice also that the coloring here is indicating the way that the words are sorted in the display. So the sort option here is sort to the right. And we have C meaning the center word and then one word to the right, two words to the right, and so on. And um, the values are ordered uh, here. The ordering is by value, meaning in this sense, alphabetically. So we have capital words first, and then we have lowercase uh, words appearing next. You'll notice that all the first words are capital we. But if we page through the results, we have 523 in total. If we page through, we'll start seeing some lowercase we uh, appearing in here. You can see here. And then again, we'll start seeing the ordering of the words to the right uh, um, ordered alphabetically afterwards. And this is a very standard way of displaying concordance lines. Uh, and the idea here is that we can order them and start to see patterns in the language. For example, here we can see we are is a frequent pattern following we, as a, in small case, and so on. Uh, we can also sort to the left, and we'll get a quite different display of results here. So if we sort to the left, one word to the left, two words to the left, and three words to the left, left it looks like this. And of course, the first word, the first concordance lines now will be different because of the ordering. We can go through them in the same way. Now, you might think that this display is actually not very useful for finding patterns because we, we have to paste through all the results and we have to kind of remember which patterns were frequent and so on. So there are a few ways to deal with this. Um, one way is to increase the page size. So for example, we could look at 50 hits and at a time and go through those. Or we could perhaps even look at all the hits um, and see those alphabetically ordered. 
but again, you may think that's quite difficult to uh, like, to use to identify patterns. So we have a few other options as well. Uh, let me just sort to the right here to make this more clear. Okay, so one thing we can do is instead of looking at all 523 hits, we can look at a sample of those hits. So for example here, instead of looking at all hits, we could say look at a random sample of 10 hits. Now you can see perhaps a, 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 an interesting pattern in how uppercase we is used in comparison with lowercase we here. Uh, but that's only 10 hits, so maybe we could have, say, 100 random hits and see then how these uh, patterns change. But it's still a little difficult to see. So Ankunk comes with a quite unique feature, which is to not order simply by value, but by to order by frequency. And that means it's going to order the results by the, the frequency of the pattern that you're looking for. So let me just explain this. I'm going to look at all hits and I'm going to have a page of 10. Okay. If I start the results here now, what we can see is not an alphabetically ordered list, but we can see which, which center word has the highest frequency and then which word to the right comes most frequently after that and then which word two words to the right appears most frequently after that. So for the center word, we can now see that we appears more frequently than in small case than in capital letters. So all the small case we appears first. But then on the right of we, then which word appears most frequently? And we have the word have appears most frequently to the right. And then we have lots of have, as you can see paging through. So then it's interesting to see what is the most frequent word that appears after have. And in this case, we can see it's a. We have a, 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 and so on. If we go down now in this frequency ordering and go to the next word that appears after we, we get the word are. We are, we are, we are. And we can see that there are many examples of we are as well. So this display is quite unique in corpus linguistics uh, uh, at this time, but it does immediately show you the most frequent patterns based on the sorting parameters that you've set. So if we reverse this and, and sort to the left, we'll then see the most frequent patterns that appear with we on the right. So in this case, it's the word is that. That appears most frequently before we. So is that, is that, is that, weigh that, assume that. And if we paste through these results, we'll see that that comes very frequently before we, and then which, and so on. So let me show you a few more things that we can do with the quick concordance tool. So we've been looking at the word we and showing, look, looking at uh, the patterns that it's used in, in this academic writing, and we've identified we have uh, so we uh, in this present used with a present perfect tense form like this, uh, and we can now investigate this more. So one thing we can do, of course, is to start using not just one word but multi-word units. So we can look for the word, the phrase we have, and we can see all the phrases that uh, um, use we have, and we can see here there there are 37 hits for we have. We have a, and then we have been, we have both, and so on. Uh, we might look for we are, and we can see that there's 29 hits for we are, and we have this present continuous tense, we are building, uh, we are building, and so on. Uh, we can even use a wildcard and search for uh, all the um, uh, words, uh, all the phrases that have a pattern with, like this. So we could, for example, We'll search for we uh, followed by W with a wild card, uh, meaning any word that starts with W. So here we can now get 59 hits for we will. If we go through the results, we will see we were, we would, and we want, and so on. 
So a variety of different hits here for this pattern. And again, we're ordering by frequency here. Um, so we're, we're seeing the most frequent patterns first. But if we went back to ordering by value and do the same hit, then we would get an alphabetical ordering, which is the more common uh, display that you'll see in many concordance tools like, th like this. And we could go, th go through these and try and identify patterns based on that. So uh, that's one thing we can do. We can also um, see these, sentence, these phrases in a larger context. So if we click on one of these hits, then what the software will do is immediately jump to the file view tool, which is the third in the list here, and it will show exactly where that phrase appeared in the original text. You can see here that it appears uh, in this J42 text, right roughly in the middle of the text there. And if we go back, uh, we can uh, look at other patterns as well. So for example, here you can see we were dragged into the 1967 something. And if we double click on that again, we jump now to the J37 file. And again, you can see the exact context where that phrase was used. So uh, that's how we can use the keyword in context concordance tool of Anconc. But just before I finish, let me show you a couple of uh, settings that you can change to make the display uh, work slightly differently. So one thing we can do, if we go to the settings menu and choose tool settings, and we can see here the tool settings for the quick display, and one thing we can do is change the colors that are being displayed. So if you don't like these colors, we can edit them and choose a different color uh, like this, for example. And we can apply that and we can get a different display. Notice the main hit color is still the same because that is a global setting. Uh, here, as all the hits will be shown in this blue color unless we change it to something else. And if we change that and then start it, then we see this different color scheme. Another thing that some people do sometimes is they hide the hit so that they can see the words to the left and the right, but not the word in the middle. And this can be used for maybe study, uh, for student learning exercises, trying to identify the word in the middle here. So if we want to do that, we would go to settings again, go to the quick cool settings uh, and click hide search term in display. And if we hide the search term and then start again, the, the hit we um, is being found, but it won't be displayed in the here. And um, then we can save these results and use them in maybe a classroom activity. So how do we save the results? Well, let me show you that now. Well, the simplest way to save the results is to simply use the interface itself. Uh, and we can here click on lines of the concordancer and uh, shift click or control click and select the lines that we're interested in. And then we can uh, use the edit setting and copy those or use a shortcut like control C. And then we can just paste that directly into uh, something like Word. So if I open a Word file here, I can now just paste that uh, into Word. Uh, the format is slightly different because of the, the sizing of the, of the uh, f font and so on. But if we um, rearrange the, the uh, table like this, uh, make sure everything's lined up as we had before, centering the middle words like this, then you can see that we are now very close to how it originally was uh, in the concordance itself. So that's the first way to save the data. And of course, if we go back to our interface, we can uh, show all the results. For example, here, we can see all the results. And then similarly, we could perhaps click the top left corner, select everything here, or again, use the edit to select all, copy those results, 
and again we can paste those into uh, a word document and then we get all the results there so that's the easiest way to save the information uh, an alternative way is to use the file option the file menu option and here we can save current tab results and if we click on that then we get an option to uh, save a plain text version of the results so let's just call these say quick results so if I now go to the folder where I save those um, you can see here we have quick results and if I open this uh, file you can see we have a plain text version of the results and these are tabs separated which means that if we copy and paste these into something like Excel which I'll just open now what we can now do is paste those directly into Excel and you can see that um, all the information is nicely separated into rows and columns and then if you're interested in analyzing this more you could perhaps edit these um, Excel results removing some of the results if they're not what you hoped or what you're interested in and so on so that's how to save the results from Ancong so that's the uh, basic way to get started with the quick concordance tool of Ancong. Mm -hmm.